we're going to move on to the five takeaways. We're going to take a look at the game and see what five things we can take away from the 3-1 win over Nottingham Forest. And the first one we're going to be looking at is Mickey, class above. Yeah, and he was definitely a class above in this game man of the match performance from him it wasn't just the goal though uh, the stats read for himself five out of five ground duels three out of five aerial duels three out of four long passes as well five tackles which is not something he actually associated with van der ven because usually he's not in a position where he has to make so many tackles but he made five in this game which shows he's a bit more aggressive and one interception and one thing i want to actually point out of van der ven is something i've criticized him for uh, in weeks gone past past is his passing and his um, effective passing going forward I feel like sometimes it takes too long and it's not crisp enough or effective enough and I thought that really improved actually uh, on the uh, on the weekend he was playing it really quickly into Werner really effectively a lot crisper as well so it seems as though maybe his passing is going up, uh, up another level as well and obviously scored the winner as well yeah, and to, to bed in to the team as quickly as he has done pretty much from the first week in a Spurs shirt. Um, nothing short of spectacular from Mickey van der Ven in this game. Completely right. He was a cut above the rest. He was a class above the rest. And um, that goal proved it. What a bloody finish that was uh, from a centre-back uh, who's not known for his shooting ability whatsoever. To rifle that in the top corner um, and send the stadium into pandemonium uh, was only what his performance deserved on the day. Um He's just a he's just a great player to watch. Like from a defensive standpoint, the speed that he has and the recovery runs that he makes, he's just a joy to behold to watch week in, week out. And I feel like we're so lucky to have him and the partnership he's providing with him and Kuti Romero at the back is nothing short of sensational. And also, I was looking at the stats yesterday and you put that Chelsea game aside. He's only been in one losing Spurs side in the Premier League, which mm. was the game against Wolves. And if you want to be really harsh, there's two losing sides if in the game against Man City in the Cup as well. So, And that was one of his first games back, I think, from uh, after the injury. So um, you, the stats clearly say we're a much, 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 much better team and much more um, you know, focused team with Mickey van der Ven in the side. Mm. So what a player he is. What a player. Let's move on to number two, and that is Werner provides again. Yeah. Um, won't officially get an assist for the own goal, but I'm going to give it to him because it was a brilliant... Uh, so unfair, that. Yeah, I think so. The, but with that kind of cross, you know, when you kind of force the defender to put it in, in, into his own net, I think you should be getting credit for that. And if you take own goals into account, um, Werner now has two goals and five assists in eight starts uh, for Spurs since signing in January. Uh, obviously, could have had another assist as well for Brennan Johnson if it wasn't for a really good save from Matt Sells. And he's having a really good impact now, uh, Timo Werner. Set, if you if you call it seven goal contributions in in eight starts, I, I don't think many would could, would have expected that after his um, signing in January. And he's really providing a really good um, element to the team on that left hand side. And the question the questions are now a lot of people are talking: Is he earning that permanent move now to Spurs? I think he's uh, going some way to earning it. Uh, to be fair, and I was always against it, and I've been against it since probably about last week. But he's really growing on me. Uh, what he shows, what he's uh, how he's kind of ingrained himself in the team as well. He just feel like he completely fits in um, with the squad and he's showing how to implement Ange's instructions perfectly well getting wide on that pitch uh, cutting inside providing good options crossing ability and the assists and the numbers speak for itself um, if you've taken the own goals into account seven goal contributions in eight starts I think is a brilliant brilliant return for Timo Werner for someone that uh, came here with the kind of narrative of he's very frustrating when he gets on the ball in his end product well if this is him when he's frustrating seven uh, goal contributions in eight games let's see what happens when he clicks exactly so big you feel like, you feel like he's got more, more to give yeah, as I well think so. you know you can feel like he can get into more, more goal scoring positions he, he's I know he's a, he misses a lot of big chances but we saw in the Bundesliga he can finish when he when he wants to you know what I mean well like on occasion he does have that finish in him so I'd love to see him get some more goals as well yeah and you know what players miss big chances Timo um, Erling Haaland how many big chances has he missed mm. this season he's considered as the best striker in the league Darwin Nunez how many uh, big chances does he miss week in week out you know what I mean big players do miss big chances it's how you um, kind of recover from that and I feel like Timo Werner is recovering from that and he's providing a really good option for the team so I think um, Timo Werner as well is kind of suffering from his tenure at Chelsea and maybe his second stint at Leipzig where people use that as a stick to beat with 
with him, beat him with instead of actually looking at his performances and seeing how he's providing the Spurs team with mm -hmm. all these great options. Mm, I agree. Um, number three is attacking defenders. Yeah, and with Van de Ven and Porro both being on the score sheet yesterday, Spurs now sit level top of the league for goals scored by defenders this season with 11 level on um, top with Arsenal, who obviously scored a lot of goals from set pieces this season. Uh, the breakdown is Romero with four, Udogi with two, Van de Ven with two, Porro with one, and Ben Davis scored one earlier in the season as well. So, uh, threats from all over the pitch and that's an important thing especially in Ange's system when it's trying to be very fluid it's important that if our attackers are having an off day then the defenders can provide and step up and get goals as well and some of the bangers these defenders have scored as well you're mm. looking at the Romero one at Burnley you're looking at the Van der Ven one yesterday the Porro one yesterday Porro in the cup against Burnley as well which is not part of the stats I mean some of our defenders are scoring some bangers this season and um, when you're looking at Kuti if I would have like four goals this season for Kuti which is level with Gabriel and Gabriel is like um, who marauded as like this massive goal scoring centre back and Romero nobody talks about him and he's on the same amount of goals as him so I haven't seen, I haven't seen Gabriel bang one in from 25 yards exactly, as well exactly he's just a set piece merchant Gabriel and but both our centre backs have banged one in from 25 that's yards that's what I'm uh. saying that's what I'm saying <laughs> so you've got to look at the quality of the goals that our defenders are scoring and I think it's a testament to Ange and the belief he's given these players so um, big up to these defenders and let's hope they can get us some more goals from now until the end of the season sorry you some in the comments is right I did miss one uh, Emerson against Brentford yeah that's as well. right. another banger so I was, I was, uh, so I was, um, that was 10 I counted so that would make it 11 with the Emerson so one is that level with Arsenal or it one? was I, that's count the one I calculated goes up to 10 not 11 oh, so I, I, I missed one yeah so okay. you're right Emerson as well which was uh, another really great finish from 25 yards so uh, it's really great that our defenders are contributing because, you know, our attackers were having, in terms of in front of goal, having a bit of an off day yesterday. So in terms of our players that are playing week in, week out and had enough minutes, is it Basuma, the only player without a goal contribution this year? Is there um, anyone else without a goal contribution? Because Saar's got one, all the defence have one. It must be only Basuma. And our starting 11, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Everyone else has definitely got one. Which is really impressive when you're looking at last season, like it was pretty much just Kane and Son, <laughs> or pretty much just Kane uh, last season uh, providing for us week in, week out. Now we've got, and this is what we said, isn't it? Before Ange came in or when Ange came in, yeah, we're losing Kane, mm -hmm. but we're going to be getting goals from all different areas of the pitch. And that's how it's panned out to be. Yeah, absolutely. Number four, we're going to look at is home momentum. Yeah, and our... Obviously, we had that <laughs> tricky run at home just after the Chelsea game where we lost, I think, three in a row at home after taking the lead. We lost to Chelsea, lost to Villa, and then we lost to West Ham. Yeah. Uh, really Wolves. unfortunate. Uh, Wolves but I'm saying it was in a row. But since that West Ham game, which was uh, right beginning of the December, we've played nine home games and won eight of them. Um, sit, we now sit fourth in the overall home table as well. And considering you know all the talk of how good Villa's home form has been, we, now, we have now overtaken Aston Villa in the home form as well. Um, so we are building a bit of a fortress now and if it wasn't for that little run where just after the Chelsea game you know in even even in that run we should have beaten Villa we had more than enough chances to win that game we probably should have beaten West Ham we gave them two goals like against run of play we were completely in control of that game so I think our home form this season we've really starting to build a bit of momentum at home a momentum now I'm still turning that home uh, um, into a bit of a fortress yeah and I always feel like at home I felt it yesterday I felt it against Luton I felt it a number of even against Brentford that there's a bit of a sense of inevitability about Spurs at home where even if we go in at half time losing or drawing you always get the feeling that you're gonna that we're gonna turn it around mm. and um, that's showing that this place the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium is becoming a bit of a fortress at the moment and to be only two points behind Arsenal and Man City who have been unbelievable at home this mm. season is unbelievable to be honest it really is so uh, big up to Ange for making this home place a bit of a fortress this now we need to make the you know, we need to up our performances and our result output on a consistent basis away from home. That's mm. that's where it's at at the moment. But at home, we are getting results time and time again and very consistent. So things you love to see. But let's move on to number five, and that is second half Spurs. Once again, how, how many times have we done this yeah. on the takeaways? Until we not become a second half Spurs, <laughs> we're going to do it. Well, we haven't won a game uh, when leading at half time since the 31st of December, which was Bournemouth at home, which is incredible. We actually haven't led at half half time since Everton away which was uh, back in February uh, it's the sixth time in our last 10 games that Spurs have won when not leading a half time so it's clearly a theme where we we struggle to kind of uh, um, 
uh, kind of in, like control the game in the first half. We have to figure teams out, and then the second half. Uh, we usually dominate and we usually have do have control and we usually take the game to the opposition and end up winning the game. So, look, I don't know whether, again, we said it before, I don't know whether it is a problem and things he has to figure out or whether he's happy that, you know, in the second half we do seem to figure out how the opposition's playing, how they're approaching the game and we seem to come out on top more often than not. And we do seem to have control in those second halves. That's really, really positive. But uh, we haven't one when leading at half time since September thirty first. So that is a something that needs to change. Yeah, look, it does worry me in terms of maybe the immediate future, but I think in the long term I do think Angel sort this out. And I think once we get uh, maybe more players in the summer and sort the squad out a bit more and Angel's had maybe another preseason behind them and ingrained his ideas a bit more into the squad, I do think this is going to be sorted out right now. In, in the immediate future, it is a worry, but I don't think long term it should be a worry. Mm. Um, but that is your five takeaways from the 3-1 win over Nottingham Forest on the weekend. Let us know if you've got any more thoughts on the game in the comments section below.